Hi. Now let's look at some spade lug terminals. Now, uh, these are used in a variety of ways. Uh, the advantage to spade lugs are they're very inexpensive. Where we'll mostly find these is on the back of power amplifiers. Um, you know, the spade lug will fit underneath the screw terminal and uh, attach firmly. These really help us. Let's look at the tool. Uh, you can see that there's different dots here, and they correspond to the different sizes of insulated uh, spade lugs. So the red would be for very small uh, wire gauge. The blue is uh, the ones that I have here in front of us, and that's what we'll work with today. But that's for uh, 16 to 14 gauge wire. And you can see the yellow, which would be for a larger gauge wire, 10 and 12. If we look back further, you can see that the, this is for insulated closure and for non-insulated closure. We're, going to, we're looking at two types of uh, spade lugs today. One is the insulated, you can see the blue insulation around here, and one is non-insulated. That's our tool. So let's take a look at a non-insulated uh, spade lug first. And I, I want to show you something here. We prepared our, our cable already. We've cut it back. But in this instance, we've stripped it back a little bit far. So, so uh, attaching the uh, spade lug onto the cable, you can see how much sticks out here. So this is something we wouldn't want to uh, crimp it and leave this on. We would want to trim this wire before attaching it. And let's look at it. Uh, we don't want it sticking out into where the uh, screw head is going to go. And we can have a little bit of room back here, uh, one wire width of width between the end of the insulation and the beginning of the spade terminal. So let's go ahead and trim this one back. That looks to be about the right amount. Now let's try again. Let's get a nice twist on here so it'll all fit together. There we go. Now let's go back to our tool. And as you can see, since we're talking about non-insulated, we're going to use this part of it. There's a rounded part. There's also a part with a tooth that pushes up to make the connection, to squeeze the cable inside the connector itself. We want to make sure that this tooth is not on the seam here. We want the tooth on the other side of the seam. So let's position this. And let's do a quality check here. We can see that it doesn't protrude where the screw head will go. And also, uh, it's clamping down on, on all bare cable. And here, there's just a little bit of room here. Let's go ahead and get this set up here. We're going to 12 to 14. Nice position on it, and give it a good squeeze. So we've crimped it on, it won't pull off. Let's flip it over and see if in fact we have a good mark. And here you can see that uh, there's a good indentation. That means that the tooth is pressed down on the a connector here and is attaching mechanically the uh, wire and the termination, the connector, very strong. I can't pull it off. Now the final step for this termination, this uh, non-insulated, is we're going to slide our heat shrink up and what we're doing is we're replacing the insulation that didn't come with the connector as if it was a uh, insulated connector. So we're going to turn on our heat gun.
we'll let it warm up a little bit. Let's move it up here and the heat shrink will wrap itself around the connector and the cable. And you can see that we've replaced the insulation and that's a good connector. Now let's take a look at a insulated spade lug terminal. So for the insulated spade lug, we've, we've trimmed this to the right length. We'll push it in. Let's make sure it goes all the way through and then we'll pull it back. Pull it back so that it's, again, we don't want it sticking out where the screw head is going to come down. We want to make sure that it's back here. We get a good connection. And you can see that there's a step here. We want to crimp in this part because this is the part that's going to squeeze down on the metal and make a good mechanical connection. This part will only be squeezing um, the outer jacket of, of this wire, so we don't want to do that. We want to squeeze in this part. Let's get our tool. And you can see that there's a spot where it says insulated closures, and that's a spot we'll use. We'll get the blue dot because that's the size that we have here, and we'll match it up. We'll line it up, make sure that everything's just right, and give it a squeeze. There we go. So you can see that that's a, that's a good squeeze on that. Maybe a little bit too ambitious, but that will hold very well. It will still protect the cable. Let's flip it over and look on the other side and there's an indentation on the other side as well. So that's a nice strong connection. We can pull on it. You can see there's not too much sticking out, just enough that we know that there's a, uh, some wire there. It's a nice strong connection and now we're just fine. Now, one final step is we're going to put some heat shrink over this juncture here just to provide some mechanical stability, to provide some uh, to keep from bending too far so that uh, the cable could be hurt. We'll get our heat gun back out. Turn it on. It's quite noisy. We'll let it warm up just a bit. Now let's put our heat shrink on. There we go. Now that would work just fine on the back of your amplifier. Okay, so we've taken a look at two different types of spade lugs, non-insulated and insulated, and we can use these to um, make great connections, uh, nice strong connections using a screw terminal on the back of an amplifier.